feel like I'm uh, painting uh, a portrait of the earth and the earth is sitting for it, just as many people have sat for me in the past. I can't see the distinction between uh, uh, portraits of things and portraits of, of people. It was my pleasure recently to have an interesting conversation with Woodbury artist Robert Templeton, and I think you'll agree, he's both a talented and fascinating man. Area of Spain, no, I've never been there. So what we have here are multiple images of, uh, of Spain, and most of these images are of Moorish design. Uh, I'm also trying to work with, instead of one image for the country, I've been trying to pull multiple images together on a canvas. Because I feel like you can say more about a country if you don't get locked into one, one setup, one scene. I mean, I'll take on Spain or Greece, and I'll take on uh, President Carter or uh, 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 Donald Reagan with the same kind of intensity, get the best of that subject. And what was it like taking on the task of painting the president? Terrific checkpoint Charlie down there at the, uh, the outer fringes. Uh, when I brought in the full-length portrait of the president, I had it rolled up like a carpet and carried it into the gatehouse. And the gentleman there, uh, I said, I have an appointment with the president for in a half an hour's time to finish this portrait. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to have to have my dogs check this out. And I said, let me show you what's in there. And he said, don't touch it. And everyone became very quiet. And I realized that I wasn't going to touch my portrait. <laughs> so we sat there and waited half an hour for the dogs to come down. The dogs gave it the cursory sniff. It passed their inspection, and I was whisked in. Yes. So I did get to the president late. And the president was furious. <laughs> he was sitting there waiting for this portrait artist from Connecticut. And I was nowhere to be seen. And he'd been calling around trying to find out where I was. And I was in the wood woodworking office of the White House, getting the painting stretched. So I explained to him what had happened. I said, blame it on your dogs. They did it. <laughs> and I explained to him that we had been waiting for the dogs to come in to approve the package coming and, I, and I'm sure he understood at that he, point. He got a yeah. terrific laugh out of it. He, he spun 180 degrees from anger with the portrait artist to uh, uh, a roaring laughter over the, the, the insanity of the whole thing. Honestly, sure, sure. He got that immediately. So you have the distinction of keeping the president waiting. I did indeed. I think that's crazy. At, at some risk. <laughs> at some risk, for sure. Before the prestige of doing a presidential portrait, Mr. Templeton's distinctive style was formed at an earlier period in his career. He painted several covers for time, including the 1967 racial riots in Detroit, Michigan Governor George Romney, and Los Angeles Mayor Sam Yorty. It, uh, it's funny how these things begin to roll. You know, you do the time covers and then suddenly you're getting commissions from people who'd seen you. Mm -hmm. And then that triggers something else. And uh, during the 60s, I was involved in this, uh, putting the civil rights uh, a group of paintings together, 35 paintings. And also I was doing um, the Bobby Seale trial for uh, Walter Cronkite on CBS. And, and getting caught up in this whole civil rights thing and all this. Was that a choice of your own? Did you I just sort of, have a personal interest in that? I, I had a personal interest mm -hmm. in it, but something kept pushing me toward these things, and it was just one thing after another would develop into another. You know, life is like that. And finally, you get that little reputation of being someone who's working with the blacks, working with uh, of the civil rights causes, and um, doing portraits of presidents. And referring to the, the large portrait of Martin Luther King, does the size of the portrait have any importance, whether it be artistically or politically? It was. It was uh, a, a, a forcing you to look at the man's eyes and the expression with, with nothing else to distract you. No shoulders, no hands, no tie. Uh, just zeroing in on that face, uh, looking at those eyes, looking at that, 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 that fear and the, what he knew was coming up. It's all there. Over the years, his artwork has evolved and expanded from the traditional concept of a portrait, and he has found excitement in painting the life around him. If uh, I can, if I see the validity of having portraits of family done for other people, there's, there's got to be some consistency in my preaching and practicing what I preach, right? And I have uh, worked with family. I've never regretted it. We, when I can steal the time between other commissions, and generally I, I have four or five paintings going at the same time anyway. Yeah to keep from getting bogged down or, you know, into a dead end on something. So there's always a way to find the time to bring them in. And I've, I've done them in Puerto Rico, and I've done portraits of them in, in Washington and in various places. And how many children do you have? Three children, three boys. And they are? Mark, the oldest, Kevin, and Tim, the youngest. Now, you first mentioned that there was a portrait of your son. 
Yeah, yeah he, he is such a small portion just, of the it entire. It just kept growing, you know. The concept kept growing. And I thought, well, I want to put him in something that's relevant. Well, at that time, he was having this mad love affair with Disney World. <laughs> I thought, this is relevant. So then we thought about the, uh, the castle, and uh, there we are. Finally, it grew to that. It appears that any true artist continues to strive for a goal, to complete the picture as it were, or to play it one more time, to become satisfied with their craft while others enjoy it with them. In Woodbury, I'm Mark Travella, reeling round your town. For more information, visit www.roberttempleton.com.